Well, here we are back on the Chamberlain gearbox after quite a bit of time. I, I can't seem to get Paul over to help me that owns it. He's just always got something happening, so I thought I'd go ahead anyway. Now, this is the main input shaft. So we've got that already. We have a new bearing at the back here, a new bearing at the front. The front bearing has a seal on this side, and I've taken the seal off the other side to help with lube. The I've die grinded the edge of all these gears where they go in to engage so we've we've done a run through all them the uh, actually all the gears have been done there this which is the output shaft we've got a new bearing on here we've tightened this nut up and locked it all up the other end here we have a new just a plain needle bearing at the end and we lock tighted that on because I felt it was a little bit loose and that will be supported at this end so first cab off the rank is to put this shaft in now we have to put this shaft in first because if we go to put the idler gears up this bearing um, or if we put the the reverse idler in first this bearing won't go past the gear so I'll get organised for that, I'll get the camera down low so you can see what's happening and we'll work it from there. This is the right hand side of the gearbox here and with the main shaft, I'm just going to try and make sure I don't move the thing and get you out of frame. With the main shaft there's room to have it all assembled and bring it in the front. So we can bring it up through into the front and support it at the back so it's, it's sitting in the back bearing there and at the front here we can put a front bearing support housing on so um, once you've slid the shaft in I'll bring you around the front and we'll put this front housing on just so we can support it then we can turn it up a little bit and we've got a, a circlip to put in behind this bearing here and this shaft we've got to slug up the back of that to make sure that we don't need all the PDO gear so follow along I'll get you around the front and we'll put the front here okay. we're around the front now and this is our main input shaft and we've got the front housing here I've put the seal in there and with the spring to the side of the oil I've cut a new gasket you can't actually buy a gasket for this anymore now so when we're sliding it over I've actually stoned the side of these splines here just to take any sharp edges off so we don't cut the seal going on but um, look, what we'll do as well if I can get my tape here working is we'll just run a little bit of tape over the spline so um, it's hard it's hard not to um, so if you start at the back, it's hard to not push the housing straight through. So look, all we're doing is running a bit of tape from the back to the front. Now why from the back to the front? Because you haven't got the overlap. See the overlaps go this way. So I think if I can bring you around there, yeah the see this section here is higher than that so your seal's not going to grab that as you go so we'll pop you back down there now this gasket we're just going to use some grease on the gasket so this is just a bit of Valvoline Velflex EP nothing special about it but we're just rubbing it into both sides of the gasket you don't need if you've got good gaskets and clean housings this is plenty and I'll fit that back onto the housing here now it goes on that way there Now before I said that um, I'd left the seal in the front here and I'd taken the one out of the back and that's true I have but 
um, lip seals need a bit of lubrication to run. So what I'm doing, I'm just going to put a little bit of grease around here. And I'll put a little bit of grease around the seal here. Two reasons. One, that seal is not running dry when we do the first initial start. And that grease in here being captive, that will keep that seal lubricated for quite a while. So, so it's just about lubricating the seal, nothing more. Um, and a little bit of grease on this on this front shaft here, that'll help it go well too. So when we look, we've got a little cut out here and a flat there for where the selectors go in. So we'll just see if we can get all that lined up. So I think it would have to go. And once, we, when we're going in here, just be very careful not to roll the lip of the seal. So that whole shaft's gone back a little bit, and look, that's fine. Um, I'll try and bring that back forward if I can, because we have to be able to get this tape off. Okay, I'll bump that bearing, I'll bump the shaft forward a little, just to bring this shaft forward so at the moment the bearing is not sitting right up into the housing here so I'll pop a screw in whoop my gasket's turned on me now there we go that's in the right spot now no need to lock tight these bolts at all they're a um it's not a it's not a see-through housing like it's a blind hole i'll just go and get the hammer and tap that forward a little now we'll pop this tape off and make sure we can get it off And there's the original join. And there we go. That's a full width of the tape. So we know we've got it all off. You just need to go right to the end of the splines. I went a little bit further then, which is something I didn't really need to do. Okay, I'll give this a little bit of a wipe. We'll put some screws in here and nip them up. And then we'll be able to go up the back again and make sure that this housing is, make sure the bearing here is right up into the housing. Right, so that's nice and firm. That feels really nice. Now, later on, we'll put a little bit of grease on the spline here, and a little bit of grease here. The, um, the throwout bearing slides back and forth on here. So we've got a new throwout. Um, it's a greasable throwout. So, yeah, that'll do for this part. We'll reset up and go around the other end. Okay, we're back in the side and we've got the gearbox turned down so the bell housing's down the front here. So what we need to do next is get our reverse idler and our reverse idler shaft must fit in there and mesh with this gear here. Now, we couldn't pull that out before 
because there wasn't enough room to get the um, when you pull the front shaft out it, it caught on this gear so we have to deal with this one now so what I like to do is just get the grease and on all these bearing surfaces and well that'll load them up with grease now coming in from one side we have a needle roller bearing then we have a spacer that goes through but look before that what I like to do here also is put a heap of grease on the inside of the needle roller bearings and, and force it out now what we're looking to do there is that by forcing the rollers out to the side when we go to put the shaft in later on we're not going to get caught on a roller and have any trouble so we'll slide the spacer through we'll probably get caught on the spacer anyway but anyway we'll go we'll see how we go once again a heap of grease and then we'll force the rollers out onto the outside now the big gear I think there's a 29 and a 28 tooth the big gear runs on this one here goes to the bottom um, yep that has to be how it is and we also have some nice thrust washers so the grease will help hold the thrust washers in place have a thrust washer top and bottom and the grease will help hold them in place and it'll also give us a bit of um, a, a little bit of lube for a start so if we put this one here and try and line the holes up best we can at least there'll always be a bit of a fiddle here Now up in the top, I can feel the shaft. Now this is the shaft here that has a bolt holds it in and then has a PDO gear on the back here. We're not using the PDO gear because we're not going that way with this box. So this has to go away from us. So if we line him up best we can, slide that shaft in. Now you can feel up from the bottom here if the thrust washer's not lined up properly. Now that's right in. I'll check that there. Now there's a bolt. This is a locking bolt that locks onto the shaft. So at this stage I should be able to come around the back of the housing and start that. And I can't pull that shaft out now. We have to wire that on later, but we know for the moment that's all we need to do. Everything's turning nicely. Gears are meshing well. Now, you look for end flow here. Look, that's beautiful. Look, just bugger all. Um, look, there, there would be a movement of like under, or a, a measurement in the book of like under five there or five or ten there. Now, with straight cut gears like this and um, thrust washers like that, if that got to fifteen there or so, look, it just doesn't matter so much. But um, we've picked the best of everything that we had available to us, so I can't actually. With the grease there, I can't actually feel much end play there at all. So, so we've got the, the main input shaft in. We've got the reverse idler shaft sitting in there.
So now we have the counter shaft. Now the counter shaft has the needle support at the front here. So we probably need to put that in first, but we can stack the gears up and bring the bring the shaft down through the gears because the the front bearing support is smaller than the spline. So we'll go and get organized for that. Right, these are the gears on the lay shaft. It's easy to have the gearbox up on its end. Now, up in the end here, where this shaft goes, we've already done the nut up and, and made sure this bearing's tight. But up in the housing, there's a circlip that stops this bearing coming too far forward. So we'll just slide that in. You probably won't be able to see much of that. I'll, I'll come in from the, from the top down for that one just because there's room for my pliers. Try and line him up if you can. There we go. So that circlips in. Now, this gear here, I think that's he goes, okay. the collar's down towards the bell housing, that's good. So, what we need to do now is come across, we can bring this shaft down, and as we come in, okay, there was a tiny little burr on the gear, oh, actually on the shaft, I'm sorry. So hopefully we should be able to get a start. Oop, how are you going there? Yep, still in still in view. Give it a little bit of a bump down. Yes, yeah, make sure we're lined up down the bottom here is the important thing. touching the rollers yet. Well, we're just a bit crooked in the top bearing here in here. sitting in there nice. So it's a sliding collar transmission so we can come down through here and engage a tooth properly. We can go up the back and engage a reverse properly. And with this fella sitting up there in neutral, this can come up here. If I keep that up. So that's looking good for that. Well, um, there's a circlip to put in on the top here, on the outside of that bearing. So you have a circlip this side of the bearing, a circlip on the back of the bearing, and that holds that shaft in. Then we just have our needle roller support at the front. So I'll put this circlip in, um, then we'll roll him up on the side and we'll put the, um, the cover over the needle bearing at the front. Okay, so at this stage, this is the idler shaft and we've tightened up the nut that holds that in 
This is our input shaft. Now that just sits there at this stage until the um, until the other shaft comes at the back, and we've got our idler or our lay shaft here um, with the sliding gears on it, and this is our output. So we have a circlip front and back. We'll spin the gearbox over and we'll put the housing on the front of this shaft so it can't move. Okay, we're around the front again and this is the needle bearing on the lay shaft. Now, the bearing at the back, as you recall, I've just put the circlip front and back of that. So the shaft can't move, but it ha does have a nice sturdy needle bearing here that um, supports the front of the shaft. Now, this gets a lot of load sometimes because uh, you have a driving gear up the front here and dropping down onto there. So the, the last, actually out of the gear boxes we had to find the parts for these, we actually had a couple of bearings that were actually chewed right out. You can hear the roof creaking. That's, um, that's just working in a tin shed. So once again, we're just gonna put a bit of bearing Oh, a bit of bit of bearing, a bit of grease on the shaft, or on the shaft on the housing. Now we have two holes close together and two further apart, so that has to sit in here. So we're organised. I'll just wipe my hands. Try and line the holes up to start with if I can. So chasing the gasket round and round in circles. And all this does, it just pushes that outer needle bearing race back into position. It's all predetermined by the circlips and all that. The, the shaft's good so we'll just tighten all this up here. You notice know, so I undo things with a rattle gun but normally I like to tighten by hand. Um, you just get a better feel for what's going on. So there's no actually pushing here, this is just a, well it just helps locate that bearing. There's no, those bearings have no side thrust on them. Been a flat roller, they don't. If it was a tapered roller, well you would have for sure. All right, we'll bring it around the side quickly. There's a quick little ride for you. And we'll zoom you in a little bit. So, with these gears here, that's what happens when you just have the engine running. The engine running, this top shaft turns all the time, splashing oil around. And because it's a constant mesh box at the back here, you'll see the idler turning. So, this, oh, I suppose not a constant mesh in the proper terms, but anyway, this fella can come up here. And the shaft, these two shafts go opposite. Bring him back into reverse, they both go the same way. Bring this fella and bring him forward. Forward's top gear. You have a big gear at the front driving on a little one straight out the back. So, so in the in the whole gist of things, you have reverse at the back. You have neutral here. This is first. You have a little gear driving a big gear. A lot of torque on that gear to push it back. 
then you go to neutral with that stick, you come to second, you run through here, and third, you run through here. So most of these tractors will be second and third. Um, this is a road rage, uh, road rage, it might be a road rage tractor, but um, it's a trekking tractor, so I imagine second and third, this fella's going to get a bit of a workout. This fella here, probably not so often. But look, that's sliding nicely. Perhaps it could have had a little bit more lead on this reverse gear, on this first gear, but you have, a, um, you have your transmission brake comes in and rubs on the idler at the back for you. You'll see the shiny section at the idler at the back. There's a transmission brake comes in there, so when you put your foot on the clutch, all the way, this is turning, and the momentum of the gearbox is there, but the brake actually comes in and pushes on that smooth section there and slows the gearbox up to get your gear in. Then once you're off and racing down the road there and you're just doing a, a double the clutch change or something like that, well, you don't press it right down enough to engage that brake, you just pop it through. So that's for a standing start, more or less. So, so look, that's good. We have to be happy with that. Before we go any further and put the selectors and all in, we'll go around to the back end here, and the back end is where we're removing anything to do with the PDO, because we don't need that for a trekking tractor, and Malteser doesn't want it on there, so we'll go and we'll make sure all our end floats are set, and everything's how it should be anyway. Okay, this is the back of the box now. Now this is the top shaft, the input shaft, this is the shaft that we just put in with the sliding gears and yeah, we can turn it when the gears don't slide forward and this is the shaft at the back of the um, reverse idler and when this tractor has the PDO in it it actually on this top shaft here we have a shaft coming through the center of the hollow drive shaft here and you can see we've put a slug in there, we've blocked that up and we've pressed that in so no oil can get up there so normally this shaft, this would have a driven shaft coming off it um, with a gear on the back of it the drive would then go across to a bearing that was sitting on this idler shaft that we've done away with now, we don't need it and then it would come out the back here on a PDO shaft that we don't need. We've got plates to blank all that off now. So we're trying to have the simplest gearbox that we can. So, so this is gone. The tapered roller bearings on the reverse either here are gone. There's no need to worry about that. No need for the nut there anymore or the bearings. We've tightened up the shaft here which we will wire on. So this shaft here, this is where we had the circlip at the front and the back of this bearing, that stops that from moving and it's just supported at the front. But this hollow drive shaft, your main drive shaft, it has to make sure that there's no movement there. Now we push that forward when we put the front housing on so we know that's sitting up in the front housing. So we keep that there. Now we don't have the centre drive shaft here anymore, we've taken that out. But what we're doing is we're using the original housing just as a spacer. So this won't actually turn. Um, this will just be sitting in the housing and this will just be holding not pressure, we don't want pressure, we want a little end float if anything because it's a ball bearing. You don't want to put force side movement onto a ball bearing. So, so what they've done originally, they've got this spacer here. Now the spacer goes in there like that. I don't think it matters which way it goes. Um, the idea of that is that we can actually hold pressure on the outside here and let the inside of the bearing have its own way. So, and then this fella goes in there and we can actually sit this cover on loosely 
and the cap that goes over here is shim adjustable. So we don't actually want any preload on it. We just want to hold it in place there. So um, I, I think the book says you can have 10 thou movement um, on the top shaft there. So because it's a ball bearing, you don't want any pressure on it at all. We just want to hold the bearing in place just like the circlip does here. So, so here's our housing. Now, the, the seal goes in here, your main, um, your main seal for your main drive shaft. And there's another plate where this other shaft comes out here, but we've got rid of all that. So for the moment, we'll just bump this housing on gently. Try and line up all the dowels. I probably should have put a bit more oil around this housing here, but anyway, I didn't, so. So we need to put a couple of bolts in this housing here and that's quite firm in there which is probably a good thing but um, I'll bump it back a little bit just so we can bump it forward and know that it's sitting on that housing okay. Now this plate that I've marked here that just does nothing more than bolt up here now where are we there and that just blanks it off, stops the oil from coming out. It doesn't do another thing. We have another plate up the top here, and this is the plate, and this is shim adjustable. So once we have the plate, once we have everything bolted up, we just put a couple of bolts loosely in here, and we just see what gap we have there. And Say there's 20 thou there and we have a 10 thou shim. Well, we put a 10 thou shim in just so, well, if there's a 20 thou gap there, we'd actually put a 30 thou's worth of shims in. So it had 10 thou movement and we're not forcing that bearing in any way. So, look, I'll go and pop a few bolts into here and we'll come back. Well, I won't put too many in. I, I will probably fit this seal with the plate off. Um, yeah, look, I'll make up my mind when I get there. Okay, I've bolted the whole back housing on. I thought I would put the seal in later, but I've pushed the main top shaft back a little bit. Now, what we're supposed to be doing is just take the top housing up here, nice and even, and we've got no load there at all. You can see that's just rolling along and what I'm finding I've had a bit of a fiddle with this off camera and what I'm finding is because I've put a thicker paper gasket in the back here um, and I've used a, a BL 308 bearing um, I can actually get this right up with no shims in it and I still have end float in the top shaft so um, we're going to go with that the but what you normally would do is you would take this up just, just firm and that's all. Make sure you have a little bit of movement in the end and then measure your shims here with a feeler gauge. So, but look, we, we just don't have to do that this time. It's just not, um, with these gaskets, that just pops straight up. No gasket there at all. We have no... No pressure there, so that tells us that the bearing's not fighting us to come back here at all. Um, which is a bit odd, but I've, I've just run through everything to make sure I haven't balled something up. And um, The only thing we've done is um, we've put a thicker gasket in the back here, because that's what we had. And that's turning beautifully. I'll try and get a dial gauge and see if I can... Um, force the shaft forward and back a little bit. Now, to do that, I'd have to 
um, put a different housing there, you know, one from the PDO shaft down the side here, which I, I probably won't do. But um, normally you, you adjust that just so there's no end float on that top shaft. So um, I'll get a dial gauge and I'll just check myself here. But look, it looks like from here, all we need to do is get a bit of Loctite 515 put on here, Loctite 515 on here to seal it, and put the seal on here, and then we can move around to the side and do the other. But like I say, normally you would have to shim this, but the way we've set it up now, and we've also mixed and matched a couple of housings just to, um, just to get the best out of things. So um, we've had to mix and match the back housing, this housing, and the front housing. So by doing that, we've look. I'm, I'm happy with it. it. It's a good thing. Um, I'll button this up. I'll actually I'll push it forward. I'll take this off. I'll push the shaft forward as far as we can. I'll take a dial indicator reading on the front shaft, and then I'll bump it back as far as I can against this plate, and we'll take another measurement. We need to know that we've got a few thou end flow there, end float, and the bearings are just going to find their own way, but for the bearings, the front and rear shaft just to be turning very nicely like they are, um, they roll along on their own, so there's actually no, you can tell there's no load there. Anyway, I'll tidy this back end up and we'll go around the side. Three, two, well, look, I've got the whole back bolted up. I've got these bolted up. Um, I've put a bit of a, like a silicon base thing around here and the top one. Now, you'll notice there's a different top one on it. They actually changed the top plate um, from 180 thou to 120 thou to 130 thou, depending on serial numbers. So we've mixed and matched and found something. We've got around 15 thou end flay on the shaft, which we're happy with, we're right on the looser limit, but look, that's fine, that's, that, that'll just be really nice. Um, the spacer that goes between this and the other bearing, um, I pulled that out again for a look and it's, it's worn a little bit, um, so at some stage, uh, and I don't have another decent one, they're all chopped up, so um, I'd say we've gained a little bit there as well. So, um, so with this slightly thicker back gasket, um, the thinner step on the top plate here and the thinner spacer between it, we're, we're sitting at, oh look, it's between 10 and 15 there. So say 15 if you really push it hard. And, and um, look, that's ideal, that's in spec. So look, everything's going to be just lovely, I reckon. Um, but yeah, we've got, I've never ever done one that I haven't had to put shims and shim this, but I think because we built one gearbox out of three, um, some of the other gearboxes, the gears, pardon me, they'd been hard and, um, oh, they'd been hot, I mean, and the gears had gone soft. So we had to pick the hard shafts and all the good bits. So um, that's worked out nicely. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit lucky. I, I, I was a bit nervous. I was checking and rechecking everything, but I'm, I'm really comfortable now. Okay, we've got all the back finished except for putting the seal in, and we'll come and do that a little bit later. Now, uh, these selectors, I've just slid the outer one on the shaft there, and we have the inner one, the inner one sitting here. So they line up. Now, with the shafts, we have to make sure that we have the detents going up, and in this one, the screw lines up with the top there. So. At this stage, we can just pop them through. Now, where's our hole? About there, so... We'll see if we can get that little screw started. No need to play with detents just yet. It's just about... Just about getting them all where they're supposed to be. And for the moment, we'll just nip that up with my little shifter. And you can see 
the holes lined up there with there. That's that's just a bit lucky how it worked out for that one. That's nice and tight. Now the other shaft's the same thing. But you'll notice with the with the detent sitting up for where your springs are here, the hole is then underneath. So that can just run in through here. There we go. So they're going back and forth nice and freely. Now we have the detents. The detents just pop in the top holes here with the springs. That one's getting a little bit stuck. I'll have to have a look why. They've got to be nice and free in the hole, so... Sometimes where the spring is, they get a little bit rusty halfway, so we'll... There we go. So to see if it's nice and free... You can see the punch... That's nice and free, we'll just check the other one. Yep, that's nice and free as well. If we have them both about in the middle hole there. When we go around the front to put the put the um, lockouts in, we should be okay. So that can drop down there, and this can go down there. And we'll pop the two bolts in there. There's two bolts with washers on them and they hold them down in there nice and tight we can actually probably put the top put the gear cover on here as well and just show you that but um, we will need to tie these um, tie these off before we put any side cover on so I'll get organized for that okay I've put a little bit of sealer on these two detent screws and the reason being you often pull them out and they're a little bit rusty so we're just putting just a little bit around the top of the bolts there that hold the detents in. It won't gum anything up, it's just to make sure that the threads seal up the top here and if there's any moisture, anything like that, if the tractor goes through moisture, um, it doesn't get stuck. Or it doesn't get come in the top thread there. I'll just nip this one up as well. I just sat this bung in as well, just so I didn't forget that either. It's just sitting finger tight. Paul can um, sort that out. That's where we actually put a lifting eye in. And we put a lifting eye in so we can lift the gearbox in that thread there. So we've got a bit of a farm made looking <laughs> set up there, but look it works. So we'll So these screws do nothing but hold tension on them, on the selector shafts. So we'll get a, get a fit all. Okay, so now you'll see they don't want to move because we've got a detent spring there so that's okay they they do move it's just that because of the tension on those springs now they don't want to okay we'll cut ourselves a section of wire we'll make ourselves a little U shape actually I might shorten this right up
and come in from the back here one in the bottom Tidy up our little loose ends here. Tidy up our tails. Okay, now that's out of the way. They're both clearing, like in neutral. They're clearing nicely. A bit of oil on the selectors there. Yeah, that quieted it up a little bit. All right, I'll go and get this side cover. We can button him all up. Okay, it's a little bit dark there. Yep, this is the front of the two shafts that come down. So they have a they have a little lockout that sits in between them. And with the lockout sitting here like this, you can it pops across one way, so you can only ever shift one gear at a time. So now's the time to pop that in. That, that just sits on this housing here and we've got a little bit of sealant on the housing and this just needs to sit in there like that which can be a bit of a nuisance to get in there I tell you and we'll find out a little bit of grease if we can and try and sit it up in there with some grease right in the middle of the two shafts and that way we can bring the other one down over the top that's not going to work Lance I suppose if I swing the gearbox around and have it facing up, we'd have a better chance. Well there you go, that's it. I just put it up on the end and <laughs> sat it in and oh, it was just easy. Easy as. Okay, what we're going to do now is put some grease on the bush here. Put some grease on this bush over here. Now on the other side of the box where the reverse idler is, we've got the transmission brake comes in. So this clutch shaft has to come in from this side. So as it's sliding through, I've dressed all of these surfaces up. We have two tapered holes in here. And on the end there, that's for the PDO brake. So we just need to bring this through I'll put a little bit more grease on the outer shaft here It is greasable, we have grease nipples each side To grease the shaft up, but anyway we put some in to get it going And we've got to find where these screws go So. We put that shaft right in there and I usually just start these screws try and get it about where you think it's going to go you see I can move that only so far so we're starting to work our way up the hole there we go 
that's not going to go anywhere. Now we've got to wire these fellas up as well. So we'll just grab a bit of wire. Try not to kick the whole show, Lance. So that's where the throw out bearing goes. And if we just have a look here, here's one I prepared earlier. I'll go and put a bit of grease. Carrier. With it is greasable from the outside. Yet um I always put a fair bit of grease on it to get it started. Just to give it a good start in life. That grease cavity in there, I fill that right up. And if it never gets greased again, chances are it'll still last. So we need to put some grease on these wearing surfaces here. Put a bit around here. And look, even a little bit on this front spline, where that goes into the spigot bearing, and there's nothing wrong with just putting a little bit don't overdo it, just a little bit on the splines of the gearbox just to help them move nice and freely. But just a little on the front there, on the splines, and you'll be surprised how easy that makes things line up. Take the excess off. Now on these little chambies, they have these little spring clips. And the spring clips pop on the little tits like that. Have a look at this one. I can't can't feel around in the dark. So now those little springs help it go back and forth on its own. So when we get you around the side there you can sort of see. See how that goes. Now the top cover here, that will have a some of the top covers have a hole in it for this grease tube, some don't. I'll probably leave that off so Paul can, when he's lining the clutch up, you can give it a bit of a rattle round in there if you choose to. Now, on the outside of the shaft, on the outer edge here, and I'll just move you across to there. Bring me milk crate with me. And this shaft goes on there. Actually, it goes. We have a little grub screw there. And where our housing's bolted on here, that's where the clutch goes. And just for the simplicity of getting it on, I may leave that off, I think. Just something less to getting down the hole there. Okay, we can't um we can't put the gear stick in yet like I was going to. Um, He's got three gear sticks here and they're all filthy dirty. I don't know what's going, which one he's decided to use. So I'll leave that decision with him. Um, we can't do everything, eh? Hey? But I've got a bit of gasket paper here and I've made a gasket for the side. And we'll pop this side plate on.
little snap on ratchets are beauties I reckon I'll probably have to get a second mortgage on my house to buy it but that's alright isn't it and tools you lose a, you use a lot you need um, pretty good quality ones You won't be able to put the um, gearbox back in with the gear stick in anyway. So. Okay, now. Okay, this is the reverse idler bolt. That's the one that holds the shaft in. Microphone around a little bit. That might help. Okay, so we've got to make sure that's tight. Yep, which it is. And once again, we get a little bit of wire. I use galvanised wire. There's proper stainless wire and all sorts of things. So. Holding over. Now, if we take that top out, we actually have a lifting eye here that screws in there. That's, it screws in when I get it straight. I suppose it doesn't really need to be that tight, but better safe than sorry. And that gives a little jiggly lifting eye. Now I'll bring you up so you can actually see that. That's in there and it's just a fitting with a M16 bolt and a lifting eye so that gives us a the place it's pretty well balanced to lift the box. Okay, we're down the back end again now, and what I'm doing here, I'm just putting a little bit of grease on the shaft, and this is the rear seal, so we're going to pop a little bit of grease on there just to help it on. So push it in until it touches. Now I have a little piece of pipe here that sits over the outside nicely. Now that appears to be nice and level, a little bit of junk comes out of the pipe, but that's okay. It was sitting down all sealed before then. So that's sealing just forward of that. I was wondering about putting two seals in, but there's just not enough meat in the housing there to do that. So that should be okay. A little bit of seal just to make sure. I would like to make sure this sort of thing's done before we send a tractor or a component home. We're probably up to a down here, but anyway. So 
shouldn't leave any puddles on his floor. I'll just tidy up around it. Alright, so the only thing we've got to do is get it off the stand here and get the PDO brake housing on.